program from the beautiful new Williams Arena at Minji's Coliseum. And Eddie, I know how happy you are to be in this beautiful new facility. It really is pretty. I mean, I, I looked around and I look around now and uh, it's, it's just a pretty place. It uh, turned out uh, much better than I expected and, and our players were excited about it. And, and we we're looking forward to having a chance to play in this arena uh, this coming Friday night. And that chance will come Friday night against the Buccaneers of East Tennessee State. And the Pirates played East Tennessee in Johnson City on Friday night. A 77-68 to victory over the Bucs. And Eddie, congratulations on the win. Ball club now 6-2. and two, All games on the road. You've won six of them, and you have to really be pleased. Well, we're pleased uh, with the record and, uh, you know, pleased with winning at East, East Tennessee. I coached LaForce in his fifth year. Uh, coming into the ball game was 49 and 6 in the mini dome, and now they're 49 and 7. So I thought that was a, a really big win for us. Uh, uh, we had a lot of people that uh, uh, that contributed and, and did a nice job. And uh, you know, we, right now I don't think the road is an issue anymore with our players. We uh, we go in and play basketball, and, and hopefully uh, that'll continue to be the case. Uh, so the whole scenario perhaps has turned out to be a blessing in disguise for us. Was well, a real good win for the Pirates, a nine-point road win. East Carolina shot right at 55% from the field, 37% for East Tennessee. And Eddie, uh, again, I didn't have a chance to watch the game. I was with football at the Liberty Bowl, but looking at the stat sheet, it looked like all facets uh, played real well. Well, yeah, we... Uh we, we have continued to shoot the ball well. Uh, we're getting better shots. We're getting a higher percentage shots. Um, the biggest uh, statistical problem we have at the moment is turnovers. Uh, we're turning it over a little too much, about 19 times a game, and I think we'll get better at that. But in uh, Friday's game against East Tennessee, that's the first time we face that type of pressure, and they're quick. And, you know, so it's a certain amount of those are to be expected. We also had five offensive fouls in the game. Uh, uh, three of them on the dribbler, which is relatively unusual. So uh, that contributed as well. So, you know, that's the one area we've got to continue to improve on. We shot free throws well down the stretch uh, and uh, boosted our team percentage up a little bit. And I think we'll get better in that area as well. Let's go over to Johnson City, the mini dome, and pick up the action as the Pirates take on East Tennessee. 5,433, the official attendance. And coming into the ball game, the Pirates set. Five and two, and coach, we see you go inside, and boy, Antoine Gill's been a tower of strength in the paint. Uh, that was Chucky and Antoine playing off each other, which they've done successfully all year, and, and really helped helped each other from an assist standpoint. Uh, they're really getting comfortable playing together. Uh, Herman just hit a jump shot, and there you see Chucky Robinson um, again scoring down low. Uh, how he didn't get the foul, I don't know, but uh, yeah, we, here we see some second half highlights and. Uh, uh, we were able to uh, dominate the glass. Uh, I think we won the rebound more by about 15. And here we are taking advantage of uh, uh, a quick throw in, heads up play by Tim Bash, and Chuck Jones gets the dunk, dunk on the other end. Uh, Coach LaForce, uh, it was 49 and 6 in that building coming into this game, and you know, that was a big win for us to put them 49 and 7. Here we go, Antoine Gill uh, late in the ball game. Scoring in the post, and they're uh, shooting a shot over uh, Patterson, who's a really fine player. But again, Antoine and Chucky did the job inside. Here they are late in the game. Uh, they hit a couple threes with good contest to, to, to keep them close. Uh, uh, you know, we were at this point just trying to run out the clock. Chucky pulls the ball back out. We're looking to move it around and, and spread the floor. Uh, we feel have confidence in Tony Parham's ability to handle the ball against in these situations, uh, and uh, he's doing a nice job for us at the point. Tony really did play well. He continues to improve. The Pirates win a big one on the road, 77-68, East Carolina over East Tennessee. As has been the case most of the year, the 268 seniors for the Pirates really providing some good inside scoring punch. And for East Carolina, 21 points for Antoine Gill and 16 points for Chucky Robinson in the ball game. And Eddie, you continue to get good scoring from those guys. They're doing a good job on the offensive boards. Our players uh, looking for them. We have a good passing team. I think we're unselfish, and uh, th I think they understand that uh, in order for us to be successful, uh, our offense needs to run through those guys. And, uh, and by virtue of doing that, it opens up things for other players. And, uh, you know, that's something that's been successful to us 
uh, at this t so far, and I think you know the real test is the acid test comes later on. We play a bigger, more physical inside teams, and if we can continue to do that, that's going to be a big plus for us. Nine point win for the Pirates on the road. Stay tuned. We're coming right back on the Eddie Payne Show. the show today I really don't know whether I should put on my basketball shorts or my football helmet this is the Eddie Payne show but we are in Memphis Tennessee at the St. Jude Liberty Bowl where the Pirates participated against Illinois and now let's roll those first half and second half highlights the Pirates and the Fighting Illini Pirates come out onto the field in the 36th Liberty Bowl game as East Carolina comes out in the all-purple, the Sabres are waving 13,000 strong East Carolina fans to back the Pirates in Memphis. And we see East Carolina come out offensively, and it's Crandall going to work. He hooks up with Sean Richardson for a nine-yard pickup. The drive, however, stalls as Matt Levine has to punt it away, and Illinois takes over. The Pirates really looking to stop Illinois' ground game, and Dothard for no gain as Willie Brookins makes the initial hit defensively for East Carolina. Illinois' offense stalls, and the Pirates get the ball back. Marcus Crandall with a pitch to Jarris McPhail, and Jarris has it stripped. And the fumble recovery by Robert Crumpton of Illinois, and the fighting Illini with the first turnover of the football game. Still scoreless, Illinois' John Johnson, who would become the MVP in the Liberty Bowl game, hooks up with Dilger in the end zone for the touchdown, and Illinois has a 7 to nothing lead with 6.09 to play in the first period. Pirates go back to work again as Marcus Crandall's back looking to the left side. Outstanding catch made by Allen Williams for a gain of 15 yards. The drive will stall. Levine has to punt 31 yards into the end zone. Illinois comes back out firing again. And again, it's Johnson hitting Jasper Strong. And this would be the big play of the day. 73 yards on the touchdown to Jasper Strong down the far sideline. The extra point added by Richardson. And Illinois has a 14 to nothing lead still in the first period of play. You can see the Illini fans beginning to celebrate in the stands as Marcus Crandall goes back to work for the Pirates in the second period. He hits Jason Nichols on the left side for a gain of 11 yards. And then Marcus goes into the end zone, and there is Crumpton again as Crumpton with the interception in the end zone. And Illinois takes over. The Illini drive stalls. Chris Richardson has to come in and boot the field goal and does. And it's now 17 to nothing. Illinois after the field goal attempt by Richardson a 21 yarder with 639 to go in the second period. Illinois gets the ball right back after another Pirate turnover and in the end zone Jason Dooley catches a touchdown pass and the Pirates are down 24 to nothing at halftime as head coach Steve Logan looks to rally the troops in the locker room at halftime. Beginning the second half, Lou Tepper brings the Illini back out. Pirates backed up deep in their own territory. And there's the pass out in the flat again to Allen Williams. A gain of 12 yards to Williams. And the Pirate drive again stalls. The punt by Levine. And here comes Illinois back again. And again, it's Johnson throwing in the end zone. This one is complete to Dothard coming out of the end zone. Uh, he makes the catch out of the backfield. And it's 30 to nothing. Illinois is the extra point was missed by Richardson. Late in the ballgame, here's Junior Smith closing out a brilliant East Carolina career, the all-time leading rusher at ECU. Junior going 18 yards on that carry, and then he caps off his career with a 10-yard run around the right side. And what a brilliant career for the senior from Fayetteville and E.E. E. Smith High School. But too little too late, Lou Tepper and the Fighting Illini look to celebrate Illinois with the victory over East Carolina in the Liberty Bowl game, a shutout for the Big Ten Illini, 30 to nothing the final score. Illinois victorious over East Carolina, 30 to nothing at the St. Jude Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee. And Steve, I know it's not the result you were looking for, but you ran into a real hot Illinois team, played so well offensively and defensively today. Well, we just missed some opportunities early in the game that I felt uh, just took us out of any opportunity to, to make it close. Um, I give them a lot of credit. They're a real good football team. And at the same time, I, I would just... Uh, the opportunities that we had, we took the ball early down the field to the 12, to the 20, to the 22-yard line, came up empty, and that was just kind of the story of the game. But, uh, Jeff, I'd just like to 
thank all the fans that made the long trip over here. I'm sorry that we didn't compete a little bit more, give them a little, something more to cheer about. But this is a, this is a first class bowl. We've got uh, a lot of our players are coming back, and I think that we can put another good competitive team on the field next year. Certainly can't lose sight of the outstanding year that East Carolina had, winning seven ball games, going to a bowl, and so much to look forward to, Steve, as you mentioned, for the future of this program with the great fan support and the commitment from the administration. And such a young team, as you mentioned, only eight seniors on this team. We had eight seniors travel over here with us. Of course, that's all we've got, and four of them played a good deal today, Junior Smith, Terry Tillman. John Krejcik and Willie Brookins. Uh, the rest of them are all coming back. So uh, you, this will wear off. It, I told our players uh, we'll pick up our off-season conditioning immediately. We'll recruit hard and, and continue to just keep uh, putting it out there on the table. And I do believe in my heart that there'll come a day where we'll be more and more and more competitive. And we just got to keep our nose down and keep working at it. Thanks, Coach. When we come back, we'll look at more activities. The Pirates in the Liberty Bowl right after this timeout. Welcome back to the Eddie Payne Show. Some disappointed Pirates after the Liberty Bowl game, but such a very, very encouraging season for the Pirates with seven victories. Our Brian Bailey puts it in perspective in the locker room. Brian? No, it wasn't there. We didn't get it going early, and that's, that's all I can say. Talk about the uh, effort out there. You're the defensive player of the uh, game, but really, I know you're very disappointed still. Yeah, I'm kind of disappointed because our offense never got on track. And our defense, we put in some bad situations, and all day we fought hard, but things just didn't work out. Do you really feel Illinois is 30 points better than East Carolina? No, not not even close. Next year it'll be a different story. Well, they got a pretty good defense, you know. They got two NFL major prospects that's going to go to the league. So, you know, you can't take nothing away from them. They play well. And, you know, that's hats off to them. It's embarrassing. It's very embarrassing. Uh, I didn't think they'd shut us out. I thought our offense would come to play, and uh, apparently they didn't. Our defense as well. That 30 points on the board, so uh, it was a total team, total team loss, and uh, you, you can't blame it on no one, no one at all. It was tough, you know. We come out and we, you know, first thing we do is we come out and we fumble the ball, and then it was kind of downhill from there. We never got back on track, and uh, you know, it was just a tough situation. We came out as an offense and, and didn't perform very well, and put our defense in some some really tough situations, and uh, you know, we didn't do do our job offensively. It's a good coach in that. You know, they was ready for most of the stuff that we was doing. We weren't able to really get it clicking today, get the run game going. <laughs> when you think back at your career, are you just going to leave a, a bad taste in your mouth, or is this just a little bit of a setback on a fabulous, fabulous career? Well, all I can look at is just was an opportunity for us, and, you know, it was a reward for us to be here. So I can't put my head down. I just got to keep look forward to keep going. And I'm just proud of what I was doing. And thank, thank God I was able to be injury-free throughout my career. They, they, put it, they put a good stop on us today. Um, we came out. We couldn't really get in our game plan. We got into some tough situations early. And I came, came out a couple, made a couple of bad mistakes, um, like on third down situations, which I should have threw the ball away. That's something that um, we have to overcome. It was a terrific educational experience for East Carolina's players coming to Memphis. They had fun. They played a football game, and they learned an awful lot. Let's take an up-close and personal look now at the activities the Pirates participated in with our Todd Gibson. Todd? East Carolina's week got off to a rough start. The team's plane was set to depart Kinston at 9 o'clock, but finally got off the ground at 1.15. Fog and a mechanical problem making for a long morning at the Kinston Jetport. After a quick practice, the Pirates got a taste of Memphis at the team welcome party. ECU and Illinois sitting down for ribs on Beale Street. Later in the evening, Walter Scott tickled the ivory at Sylphie O'Sullivan's. On Wednesday, East Carolina walked away with plenty of hardware at the coaches' luncheon at Rendezvous. Marcus Brandle and Junior Smith were named co-offensive players of the year in the Liberty Bowl Coalition. Well, it feels great. It was, a very, it was a surprise, but I'm really honored to, uh, to accept this award. Me and Marcus, you know, um, I, I think it's a privilege for East Carolina University to have two athletes to receive the same award, and I think it shows what kind of university that we had, that we're up and rising. 
and that um, better things are going to show in the future. This is a great honor for me, great honor for the fans here, and this is an accomplishment for our team overall. You know, everybody put in the effort to, you know, for me to accept this award, so I thank everybody that it was associated with it. Meanwhile, Steve Logan was the obvious choice for Coach of the Year. And players do it. You know, they, they not only play the game, but uh, the, the award that I got is a reflection of the players and coaches. And, and uh, really all you're doing at the top is guiding things. You're not necessarily in the trenches. So it was really a humbling award for me. And, and I'm sure it was for Mark and Junior as well, because those things don't happen without a lot of good people around you. After another helping of ribs, the Pirates had their second practice in Memphis, ECU getting a longer workout after Tuesday's delay. <laughs> After a night on Beale Street, the players had some more freedom in the morning on Thursday. Once again, the Pirates hit the practice field early in the afternoon, ECU's final hard practice of the year. In the evening, both teams again went head-to-head -head at the supper table, the touchdown club team dinner being the highlight of the evening festivities, a night that included a talent show. On Friday, the players visited the St. Jude Children's Hospital. Each year, this is one of the Liberty Bowl's main attractions. Players from both teams helping to raise the spirits of some less fortunate children. I yeah, appreciate you guys coming up and visiting the kids and everything. Well, doing great work. Well, thank you. Good luck, Saturday. You seem to be one of the uh, children's favorite today. Why is that? I'm just a big kid. I like to play around, joke around, go around, make everybody smile. And I, that's what I do on the team, and i just trying to bring that, that same thing out here. So. When you look back on the trip, will, will this be one of the moments you'll remember? Oh, yeah. You know, it, it, it will be. Coming out here just to see, see them smile, because a lot of them are going through a lot of pain, and just trying to help them out. You know, it, it means a lot to us and a lot to them. Make you thankful for what you got, I guess. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Every day, you, got, you wake up and say, you know, you could have been in the same position, and that's why you're supposed to give so much, you know, try to help them out. A parade in the afternoon on Beale Street ended the Pirates' preparations for the game. A busy week for the Pirates in Memphis leading up to the ball game. Reporting for the Eddie Payne Show, I'm Todd Gibson. Our Sprint Carolina Telephone student of the game is women's track performer Megan Magruder. A junior from Burke, Virginia, Megan carries a 3.31 GPA majoring in exercise and sports science. We're pleased to salute Megan Magruder, this week's Sprint Carolina Telephone student of the game. Welcome back to the Eddie Payne Show. It's been a very exciting week around the ECU Athletic Department. The Liberty Bowl game, of course. The Pirates with a big road win at East Tennessee. And, of course, the opening of Williams Arena at Minji's Coliseum coming up on Friday. And Eddie Payne's Pirates had a chance to come in and practice in this beautiful new facility this week. And, Eddie, I know that you and Steve Logan are really good personal friends. You back his football program. He certainly backs your basketball program and your guys had a chance to come back from the victory at East Tennessee and watch the Liberty Bowl game on TV and listen to it on the radio. Yeah, we uh, we were fortunate to be able to uh, to cut down their travel time to East Tennessee. We we flew there uh, Friday morning and flew back early Saturday morning. We got back. We had a chance to watch the game and uh, uh, we were really anxious to to, to support our football team. Uh, you know, we're, we were disappointed like most Pirate fans, but I, I think that uh, there's no doubt that th that team and that program is going to get better and continue to uh, to make its name in college football circles. And you know, hopefully, uh, we can help them, uh, and just like they help us. I mean, this this arena uh, success 
the crowds that, uh, that, that are in the arena when the recruits come here, all these things, success breeds success, and we're all in this thing together, and, uh, you know, we're pulling for each other. So, uh, you know, we're looking forward to doing our part for uh, our basketball program and for the entire university and athletic department. Paints a very positive uh, picture for everybody associated with ECU. Back to the hardwood now. It's back on the road again as the Pirates have to go out to Springfield, Missouri and play Southwest Missouri State on Wednesday. And, Eddie, down through the last decade or so, Southwest Missouri has had an outstanding winning tradition. They're very, very successful under Charlie Spoonhour, and they've continued that now. Uh, they have a, a terrific home court advantage, very uh, aggressive, I wouldn't necessarily say hostile, but very supportive, loud crowd. It'll be very, very much like a, a, a conference game in terms of the atmosphere. Um, the basketball team is in the power rankings up in the 40s. They're undefeated. They're an exceptional team uh, led by a young man, a guard named Murdoch, who in his senior year has already been all Missouri Valley for three consecutive years. Uh, it'll be a really, really uh, great test for our team and a very difficult one. And then very exciting on Friday night, East Tennessee will return the visit to the brand new arena, the first time that Williams Arena at Minji's Coliseum will be open for game play. And Eddie, we certainly want to pack this place 7,500 plus strong in here for that first game on Friday. Well, I certainly hope we do. Uh, I think once they get here, uh, they're just going to be really excited and hopefully uh, uh, help us play better uh, and continue to improve as a basketball team. I, I, I think we have an opportunity, uh, I've said this many times, to really have something special here in this arena. is just a beautiful place to, to make it happen. And make sure you make it happen and get out here and support the Pirates on Friday night. It will be a women's and men's doubleheader against East Tennessee. Coach, congratulations on the victory. We'll see you next week. Okay, thanks a lot, Jeff. That's the head coach of the Pirates, Eddie Payne. Join us again next week for Pirate Basketball on the Eddie Payne Show. So long, everybody. The Eddie Payne Show has been presented by Sprint Carolina Telephone, by the Hilton Inn of Greenville, by Morgan Printers Incorporated, by Wachovia Bank, by Pizza Hut, and by Pepsi. U.S. Air, the official airline of the East Carolina Pirates. U.S. Air begins with you.